y'all it's Jackie and I want to make my squash casserole for you um, it is a patty pan squash uh, recipe that I found a recipe I liked it and then I made my own changes because that's what I do so um, I am going to cut everything up and then I will show you uh, how to put it all together uh, you might wonder why I'm wearing a glove. Well, when I cut the patty pan squash the last time, I ended up with this weird film. Um, it's kind of like with the zucchini. It has a lot of moisture, uh, but this, like, it, it dried, and then I couldn't get it off, so I thought, well, I'll wear a glove. So that's why I'm wearing the glove. I already started cutting some of the stuff up uh, just because of time constraints. I just got home from work, and I had to feed family. The dinner from tonight which is why there's dirty dishes behind me and then I'm doing this I'm gonna put it in the fridge and then George my fiance will put it in the oven tomorrow uh, so then that way it'll be done whenever I get home so just uh, briefly so this is a patty pan squash and see it's like a little spaceship I have a bigger one here it's cool right our friend gave this to us uh, from his dad's garden so I'm super excited. I love fresh vegetables and anytime somebody gives us some that is wonderful. Also I have, I grew peppers in my own little garden. So this is my fresh red pepper that I will be cutting up uh, for the patty pan squash. Also the recipe that I yeah kind of riffed on I guess called for jalapenos. So I grew jalapenos this year but they all turned out red. And they're not spicy, they're sweet. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if I didn't pick them soon enough, but they're delicious, so I'm gonna use them um, kind of just like as a red pepper. So let's see, so I have red pepper. I'm also using um, some purple onion because that's what I have in the house. And again, uh, I cook with what I have on hand and I just kind of make up recipes. So. I will link the recipe that I um, took this from because the topping part, I pretty much follow exactly as is because it's delicious, oh my goodness. Um, but we're gonna do a couple of different things uh, this time. I'm actually, the first time I made it, I just made it as a side dish to some grilled chicken that we had. But uh, George and I had the idea, why don't we add something to it? So like some ham or some sausage. I have some smoked sausage in the fridge that I thawed from the freezer. So it's kind of like kibbalsa. Um, and so I'm gonna chop that up and fry it, put that in the casserole dish. And like I said, put it in the fridge. He'll take it out and put it in the oven tomorrow. So easy peasy, just gonna require a little bit of cutting for me and some time. I'm not gonna make you watch it because how boring is that? Um, when I cut the patty pan squash, just to let you know, I don't really know how to cut it. I'm sure I could have looked up a video. I just kind of cut it around the stem. Um, and then I just chop it up into cubes. So I'll show you what it looks like whenever I'm done. If you want a more instructional video to cutting stuff, let me know. I am not the expert. I just do what works for me. And I think that's it. So we're going to get this party started and I'm going to finish cutting this up and then I'll give you some more what I'm doing then. Okay. All right. I'll be back right now. I have all of my stuff cut up. So the original recipe, this will bring you over here is, um, again, it has all the ingredients measured and I don't really measure things very good. Um, but it's uh, some cooking oil, some butter. Uh, she called for five medium yellow squash uh, sliced, salt and pepper, two fresh green chilies, hot or mild, a bunch of scallions, and some garlic. So I don't have scallions in the house, and I'm not going to buy them just for this. So I think, think I said before I had some red onion. So we have some red onion and some of the red jalapenos uh, chopped up. And we can see those. And then um, I also have some uh, kielbasa, well not kielbasa, it's smoked sausage and some garlic. Okay, here we go. Now we got the camera turned around. So this is the big bunch of um, patty pan squash. This is the smoked sausage and I chopped up some garlic. I have some butter that I put in the pan. Uh, some of the red onion and the jalapeno. Okay. So right now I have a pan and yeah, it turned a little brown. Sorry about that. I was talking and doing my thing. So I'm just going to swirl that around. I turn the heat down on low and we're going to throw the sausage in. So I'm going to put you on pause while I do that. 
Okay, so you can hear it sizzling. Um, the reason I'm doing this part first, again, I've not made it this way before, but I want to render the fat out of the sausage, and then when I cook the vegetables, it'll cook in some of that fat. Um, and also, I want to get it a little bit brown, so that's what we're doing right now. We're just browning um, our sausage, and then I'm going to put that into the casserole dish, and then I'm gonna do up the vegetables, and then I'll put those on, and then I'll just stir it together. And um, I'll show you that whenever we get to that point, okay? All right. So uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I'll share a couple of little kitchen hacks maybe that I use that, um, you know, I've learned along the way or I picked up along the way. So I learned how to cook by watching the Food Network back in the day. So Rachel Ray was a big one, her 30-minute meals. Um, and one of the things she always used was a garbage bowl. So, you know, when she was peeling vegetables, she would put like the ends of the onions in there or if she was cracking eggs, she would do that. Um, and I did do that for quite a while, but then I realized that, hey, that's an extra dish that I have to wash. So now what I do is these lovely little bags uh, that you get from the grocery store that I also use for garbage bags. This is what I use. I always put one in my little dish uh, where I wash the dishes. Here, I put all my garbage in it. Um, and then when I'm done, I just close it up and I put it away. Uh, this jar you might see sitting here, this is bacon fat. So whenever we cook bacon, uh, we do it in the oven. It makes much less of a mess and it's delicious, but I always save the fat because I use that to cook. So I put it in a mason jar. During the summer, I keep it in the fridge. I have it sitting out because we did eggs uh, for dinner last night. And so when we do eggs, we like to have the bacon fat uh, to cook that in. So that's another little thing I do. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you was my garlic. So I like to use fresh garlic. I'm not a big fan of the jarred garlic. I think it doesn't taste as good. Um, so I buy the bags, <laughs> which is probably the same thing, but I buy those bags of pre-peeled garlic. Um, and then I put them in the freezer and then I just take out the cloves that I need. I let them fall for like five, 10 minutes. They're easy to chop and then I put it in. So those are just a couple of little hacks I use. Now, if you can see the sausage is turning brown, it's getting a little bit of those crispy pieces on it. I love that, it creates a little bit of texture. Um, because when you're doing a low carb diet, texture is something that you miss. So I try to get it wherever I can. Um, I'm also not going to fry the vegetables as long as I did the first time around. So I'm hoping that will also create a little bit of a crunch. Another good reason why I went ahead and cut everything before I started cooking. I have my high-sided skillet. This is what I'm using. We have a gas oven, which I'm getting used to it. <clears throat> I never had one before. All right, so now you can also see all that good fat uh, that has released from the sausage. We're gonna use that goodness to cook our vegetables in. So I'm gonna pause again. I'm gonna put this uh, meat into my casserole dish, and then I'll come back and show you what I'm doing with the vegetables. All right. Okay, so now the next part that I have is to cook the vegetables. So I'm gonna put the onions and the peppers in first. I put a little bit of that bacon fat in there just cause fat's flavor. Um, one of the things you'll find when you're doing low carb is that you also wanna have some fat uh, in your food. So, oh, that's the sausage you can see there. I just put it in. I'm gonna mix it all around with the vegetables. Um, this is really hard to do one-handed. I threw the onions in, those are the jalapenos. I'm gonna throw the red peppers, and I wanna get every little piece because it's delicious. And we're just gonna fry these up for a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna add the patty pan squash, which I'm not gonna be able to do while holding the phone because, yeah, I have a whole bunch of it, but it cooks down, so we wanna make sure we do that. So I'm just gonna stir this around. Like I said, let it cook up. I've got it on like medium heat. That's my dog, Sophie. She's hanging by the stove. So she knows mama drops stuff in the kitchen. That's why it's called Chaotic Kitchen or Kitchen Chaos, whatever I decide to name this. It's gonna be something like that because, you know, I burn myself, I cut myself, and eh, you know, this is what happens when you cook. So, and uh, also the fat, the, the extra bit of fat I put in, uh, the squash will soak a lot of that up and absorb a lot of that flavor. So that's why I also do a little bit. I would say there's probably about two and a half tablespoons of fat in there. I'm just throwing the rest of that onion in. Waste not, want not. That is my motto. Um, 
And yeah, so you can see how beautiful the colors are. I mean, really, you could use any kind of pepper. Again, I'm not big with following recipes. I'm not good at writing stuff down. I always say, oh, that was really good. I should write down what I did. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So you know what, these videos will also help so that when I wanna recreate something or maybe tweak it, I can look at it and say, oh, you know what? I know what else I'd rather do. All right, so we're gonna let those bad boys go and then we're gonna add this big old pan of squash right here. That's right, it's going in. So I'll come back once I got that into the skillet. Um, we always add the garlic last because we don't want it to burn. So the last like two minutes of cooking, I'll be adding uh, my chopped garlic. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're back and I have the squash in the pan and you can see it like filled up the pan. Um, and again, it's gonna cook down. I also probably cut a little bit too much, but I'm trying to use it up. Um, I plan on having this for dinner for tomorrow and then the kids have band. Uh, they have a football game on Friday, so they'll come home from school, they'll eat real quick, and then they have to go back uh, to get ready for the football game. So <clears throat> I'm hoping that this will last the four of us. George and I don't eat a whole lot, um, but I have two teenage boys, so you know how that goes. And so I'm hoping that it will feed them for the two days. So one of the things I find in recipes are people don't season their food. I season my food a lot. I don't want to have to add seasoning at the table. So you might think, wow, that's a lot of salt or that's a lot of seasoning. But I find, especially with squash, it really soaks it up. And again, I find I want it to be flavorful. So I pretty much grab whatever I have in my pantry. So right now we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And this is some pink coarse salt that I got at our bulk store. So I put that in there. <clears throat> this is something I use a lot of. This is a uh, Sazon. I buy it at my Oh, what is the name of the store? Um, Save-A-Lot. So, I don't know. I've never seen a Save-A-Lot until I came to Pennsylvania. So, if you know what it is, yay. But if you don't, um, yeah, I don't know. I've never seen it anywhere else. But it's a blend of seasonings. It has, like, parsley and garlic and some different things. I don't know. I use it a lot. It's like my seasonal. So, I put a healthy dose of that. Um, oh, the other thing I always use a lot of is onion powder. This is one that I got from Aldi's. So, I know I put onions in there, but onion powder just, I don't know, gives it another kick. So, and, you know, measurements, I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing. Maybe a half a teaspoon? Uh, if it's something important that I measure. Oh, this is the other one, garlic powder. I always have garlic powder on hand. So, again, I'm just going to kind of eyeball. I'm just kind of going around the pan. In my head, I'm going, I have a lot of stuff in there. So, I want to make sure that I catch it all. I'm just going to put a tad bit of cayenne just to help cut through some of that richness. Because this is a rich dish, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, the topping, oh, it is so good. It's cream cheese, mayonnaise, and an egg. So it creates almost a custardy kind of topping. <clears throat> and then the last time when I made it, I actually put some walnuts on top because I don't remember what she put on top of hers, but you know, being low carb, I'm always trying to find substitutes. I wanted something to give us some crunch. So yeah, I have some crushed up walnuts in the fridge that I use when I bread like pork chops or chicken. And I put a couple of those on the last couple of minutes of cooking and that came out really nice. So, all right. But like I said, you have all these nice healthy vegetables and then you have some of that fat. It also helps fill you up. Don't be afraid of fat people. I know we were all raised that way. Believe me, I've been on the low fat bandwagon for years. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of cough there. I'm talking too much. Um, but since I kind of got off of that and I started reading labels, like, I don't buy low-fat dressing anymore. Mm -mm. Oh, read the labels. It's ridiculous the amount of stuff they have to put in there to make up for the fat. And I, I feel like if I just use a little bit less, that it's worth, um, you know, having the full fat and having the full flavor. So, yeah, so mayonnaise. I used to always buy low-fat mayonnaise. I don't do that anymore. Um, yeah, and I use, I um, always am saving the fat from what I cook. Like if I cook chicken, um, <coughs> or like I said, bacon, even beef, I always save that fat and then use it in my meals um, because it's a healthy fat for you. The only time I really use cooking spray is when I'm spraying the dish that I'm putting in. So, oh, that's another good hack too because I made ribs in the crock pot the other day. If you spray your crock pot with cooking spray because I ran out of those crock pot bags, it helps so much with cleanup. So that's really all I use. 
Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch this. I am cooking the squash. I'm just kind of stirring it around. I want it to be like al dente, so a little bit of a bite to it, because it's going to cook in the oven for about 45 minutes tomorrow. I don't want it to be too smushy. It was a little smushy, although delicious. Um, so we're going to try not to cook it quite as long. When I'm done, I'm going to add this to this. Um, I'm going to give it a stir, and then I'll show you how I make the topping. Okay. Okay, so um, in a bowl, I have probably about six ounces of cream cheese. The original recipe calls for four. I did a little bit more. I decided instead of doubling the topping recipe, um, I'm going to just try to do the amount that I made before. We'll see how it goes. If I need to make more, then I'll probably cut the rest of it in half. Uh, so about six ounces of cream cheese. I have three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. I love my little doodad. You just squeeze that out and mix it together. It's great. Um, she calls for half a cup of cheese. So I'll probably do a quarter cup of the garlic parm and then a quarter cup of the regular parm. And I almost forgot, she also calls for two eggs. So we have these gorgeous duck eggs that a friend of mine uh, sells us. They're $2 a dozen. They're huge. And if you have never had a duck egg and if you like yolk, you need to get yourself some duck eggs. They are crazy good. Um, we also have uh, our neighbor has chicken, so we get some fresh uh, chicken eggs from them, which the kids prefer because they think it's too much yolk. We think they're crazy. We love the yolk. So there you go. So I'm going to be beating one of those. I'm going to add all this together. I'm going to stir it into the bowl. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And then I'm going to pour that on top of the squash casserole. Like I said, we'll see if we need to make any more. Okay. Okay, y'all. So we're back in, you know, chaotic kitchen. That's what we got. So I got too distracted by talking to you that I totally forgot that I should have tested my cream cheese before adding the egg to it to see if it was soft enough to mix. Even though it sat out for 45 minutes while I was doing everything else, maybe it wasn't quite that long. It's difficult to combine. <laughs> So note to self is make sure you microwave it. I usually microwave it for about 30 seconds and that usually does the trick. It makes it much easier to combine. So this is going to take me a little bit of work, but this is kind of what it looks like. Um, like I said, a little bit more well incorporated once I get that cream cheese melted. Um, and then I'm going to pour it over the casserole. So stay tuned. Okay, so we are back and... Um, yeah, you know what? This is a real cooking thing. I'm not going to make this recipe like 20 times until I get it perfect because I don't have that kind of money to spend on food. Mistakes happen in the kitchen. Just make a note. Uh, soften your cream cheese a little bit in the microwave to make it more manageable. So what I did, um, I did it the best I could with trying to get it mixed. There are some chunks of cream cheese going on here. I will tell you, my oldest will not mind. He loves cream cheese. So I think it's going to melt down. It'll still be delicious. Um, we're just going to go with it. And the other thing I'm going to add is I'm going to cover the top with some uh, shredded cheddar. Now, normally I like to shred my own cheddar because they add like potato starch and some different things to shredded cheese. I know, I didn't know that either. It keeps it from sticking together. So usually I buy um, the blocks of cheese uh, at like Aldi's or at Save-A-Lot. It's less than $2 uh, for an eight ounce block. And I shred that in the food processor. I unfortunately have not had time to do that. So I do try to keep some uh, shredded in the freezer for hmm, cheese emergencies. So I'm going to cover uh, the casserole with the cheese and then I'm going to put saran wrap over top of it and I'm going to put it in the fridge. It has cooled down enough um, with all my futzing around and then I will show you what it looks like tomorrow. Now you put this in the oven. I'll give you better whenever I look at it. It's 350. I want to say 45 minutes and I believe what I did the last time is I put it in for about 40 minutes. I put the, um, I sprinkled the walnuts over top and then I put it back in for another 10 and then I let it cool for about 10 minutes or so. Now you're going to have some water uh, that will develop in your casserole dish because it's squash and it's watery. It's still delicious. Put it in a bowl. That's probably how I'll serve it tomorrow uh, with a little side salad. All right, gang, so till tomorrow, uh, we'll see how it comes out, and I'll let you know, and I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully, the kids won't get into it before I get home. All right, thanks. Okay, so here we go. It is the next day. George has put the casserole into the oven. This is what it looks like when it came out. I already started cutting because I forgot I was going to show you what it looked like. Um, but 
that's it. And it's all its beauty. All right. Wish us luck. Okay, so I just wanted to give you an update on our uh, casserole. It was delicious. Everybody loved it. I'm thinking about maybe doing some different ideas to it. Maybe some ground uh, Italian sausage or something along those lines. Maybe some ground beef, ground turkey. I don't know. Something. I feel like I want to try something else. Um, but like I said, it was really good. So I just wanted to tell you, George took it out of the refrigerator about a half an hour to 45 minutes uh, before he baked it. And then he baked it at 350 for 45 minutes, uncovered. Uh, I forgot to tell him to put the walnuts on top. So anyways, it was fine. It was still really good. So, you know, those things happen. I try to leave him a list on what he needs to do before I get home from work. And I just forgot to write it on there. So I hope you guys will try this. Um, like I said, it's really good. Even if you don't want to add the sausage or any kind of protein to it, you can just have it as a really good side dish uh, to something. So uh, we'll definitely be making it again. And I might try to refilm this video at some point just so, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be good to each other. Peace out. Bye.